Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Shelly and I'm currently teaching second grade in Northern California. And as you can tell by the title of the video, today we are talking all about math centers. Now this is a very highly requested video on my channel right now because when I was setting up my classroom, I kind of gave you a quick sneak peek at my math centers board. And I also filmed a very similar video all about my literacy centers. I will make sure to link that one down below. So I've been getting tons of questions about if I run math centers the same way, how often do I do them? So in this video, I am going to dive deep, just like I did with my literacy centers and break down for you exactly how I run my math block and the things that we do inside the math block. So here we go. All right, so just like my literacy centers, there are a lot of moving pieces, a lot of different student groupings. So I'm going to do my best to go slow, break it down for you guys. I have a couple visuals to <laughs> help you understand exactly how it all works. But again, once it all fits together, it's magic. So first things first, math. I have a math block all five days in the week. My math block is one hour long. Now I don't do a direct teacher lesson all five days, what we do, and when I say we, I mean my team teacher and I, because again, this is totally all from her, um, and I'm adapting it to my classroom this year. So what we do is three days a week, we teach a specific lesson from the curriculum, and then the other two days we run math centers instead. So I first wanna talk about the teaching days, and then I wanna talk about the math center days, but both play a really big role in to why this kind of format is really successful. So I will explicitly teach a math lesson on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. However, I will not teach the math lesson whole group. What we do is we split our kids in half, and we do something called the flip-flop. So essentially, we will spend the first 30 minutes teaching the first group, and then they flop, and then we will spend the second 30 minutes teaching the next group. And I will talk about what the other group is doing during that time in just a second. But that is the basis of teaching days. We call it a flip-flop. I love this because one, the kids are grouped, which we will talk about in a second. So you can really target their specific needs. Also, this type of model makes it really easy to catch mistakes. When you have 25 kids on the floor with whiteboards, it's really hard to catch and fix mistakes quickly. So when you have a smaller group and you're doing a whole group lesson, a whole group lesson, it makes it so much easier to kind of fix those little errors quickly. Okay, the student grouping with math is a little bit tricky because there are kind of like three different ways we group. So the first thing that we do is we split the kids into four groups and we call it North, South, East, and West. And within the four directions, we group them based on ability. So it typically ends up that North are our really high kids, East are our medium high kids, South are our medium low kids, and West would be our lower or our math strugglers. So we do this for a couple of reasons. One, when we do our flip-flop days, they know that Northeast is always together and Southwest is always together. So typically I teach the Northeast first, so I will have my higher group first because they don't need as much support, so it typically goes a little bit quicker. And then I will take my Southwest group, which are kids that struggle a little bit more so you can spend a little bit more time with them. So that is the first reason we have North, South, East, and West. The second reason that we have North, South, East, and West is because it makes it really easy to pull math groups throughout the day if you need to. So if you watched my literacy center, sometimes I will actually pull a random math group during that time if one of these groups really needs some kind of support. So maybe we're in literacy centers and I have an extra 20 minutes to pull a small group. I might say, okay, my West group, please come back here. We're gonna do something really quick. So they know what group they're in and it makes it really easy to pull the homogeneous groups to support. So that's the first way we group students. I will talk about the next way when we talk about the center days. But it's really important to note what the other group of kids is doing while I am teaching my first lesson. So I will pull my Northeast kids and I will teach a lesson. We use one curriculum. It's just what we use at our site. I personally really love it. So I will teach this one lesson to half of my kids. Now, 
The other half of my kids is at their seats on a computer engaging in a really awesome program called Happy Numbers. So this is the first year that I'm using Happy Numbers and I'm actually really, really excited. It is an online math program and the reason I'm so excited is because at the very beginning of the year when you introduce this program, the kids take a placement test and essentially the program individualizes instruction for each kid. So it's kind of like another level, another tier of differentiated instruction. So for example, maybe one student is still struggling with some kindergarten concepts while another student is well into second grade math. Happy Numbers differentiates their instructions and gives them the lessons that they need, which is why I love doing this while I'm teaching the other group because this is a 30 minute dedicated time for them to really practice kind of where they're at. I'll try and do a little screen recording here so you can see a little bit of the program, but I love it because the program kind of teaches a skill and then they practice the skill and it is so much more engaging and kind of almost like hands-on on a computer, if you will. So the kids get a lot of extra practice, which I really, really love. Also, the way that it's set up is it's really easy for me to kind of track and see where they're at. If there's certain things that they're struggling with, I'm able to then take that information and kind of target it in a small group. So, like I said, this is the first time I'm using it this year, but I am so excited to give it a try. I'm gonna kind of keep you guys updated throughout the year to see how it's going, how I like it. So yeah, I'm really excited to give that a whirl. So that is what the kids are doing who are at their seats while I am teaching the other flip-flop group. I will also sometimes pull happy numbers into centers, which we'll chat about in just a second. So if you're looking for a really good like math program technology, definitely check it out. I will have them linked down below. All right, so speaking of centers, we have covered the Monday, Wednesday, Friday portion of our math block. So then on Tuesdays and Thursdays, two days a week, is when I will run math centers. Now, finding a time to do centers and kind of a system that works for me has not been something that I've been able to do. So I'm really excited to give this a try this year. So before we jump into what each center is, this is kind of where the structure gets a little bit tricky and where my visuals will come into play. So like I said, my math is a one hour block. So during center time, there will be three 20 minute rotations. Now, there is a different student grouping during center time and it is still homogeneous, meaning that the kids are at the same level and there's only about like three to five kids per group, which makes it really easy when I pull my small groups. So, like I said, there are three different rotations. Now, to make this work, I have two different rotations within those rotations. So I will put a little visual here, you can see. There are three centers, that groups go to on Tuesday, and then on Thursday, they will go to the other three centers. So essentially, there will be three groups, let's say pink, orange, and yellow, that will rotate through three centers on Tuesday, while green, blue, and purple are rotating through the other three centers. And then on Thursday, that will flop. So essentially, each group only gets to each center one time throughout the week. And unlike my literacy centers, I have actually designated teacher time in the math centers because it is only twice a week. And I do wanna see each group every single week. So with this model, I am able to see every kid at least once during the week. So I'm hoping once we talk about all the centers, it will make a little bit more sense. So I will talk about the first three center rotation. Okay, so the first three centers are Lexia, which is a computer program. Yes, I know that it is not math related, but I will touch on it in a second. Um, meet with the teacher, that is me and then a fact fluency center. So the reason that we have put Lexia in with our math center rotation is because it is a very, very powerful program, especially for second grade and filling the gaps. So the more exposure they have to that program, the better they get at reading and writing. So we figured this would be at least one 20 minute chunk where we can slide it in. Even though it's technically math centers, they're only going to this Lexia center one time during the week. So it's not that big of a deal. The second center is very obvious. That is meet with me. And there are six different colored groups. So I will have six different levels of math kids. And at this center, I will do all kinds of things. Sometimes it is reteaching. Sometimes it is going back and doing way deeper intervention, like maybe just basic place value. Sometimes it is an extension of some kind. This is the best way that I've found to carve out that dedicated math small group time. Like I said, it was really hard for me to find a time to do that in the past. And then the last one is a fact fluency center. Now I'm going to lean on my team teacher a lot and I know you guys are gonna have questions, but this fact fluency center is going to be some type of fact fluency game or practice of some kind. So it might be on a computer, it might be flashcards, it might be some kind of a fact fluency game. I don't have all of those, my team teacher does. 
As I figure out what that looks like throughout the year, I will definitely make sure to share in like classroom vlogs and stuff. But I also think there's a lot of stuff on Teachers Pay Teachers, fact fluency games, all kinds of things. But as you might know, second grade is really big on addition, subtraction, and really nailing those facts. So it's important that we carved out a time during math centers for them specifically to practice their fact fluency. All right, so let's say pink, orange, and yellow are going to go through those three centers on Tuesday. So then pink, orange, and yellow will go to the next three centers on Thursday. So the next three centers are a math adventure, which we'll chat about, a math game, and happy numbers, which we just chatted about. Okay, so the first one in this set is a math adventure, and I love this. I think it's genius um, for how simple it is. So essentially our curriculum, and almost all curriculum, has like practice pages for the kids to work on. So what we did is we printed out each unit's practice pages, all the lessons, and we compiled them into a packet, and we called it a math adventure. And that's literally all it is, is practice pages of the skills that we are learning. For some reason, calling it a math adventure apparently gets the kids really excited because once they complete a math adventure packet, AKA an entire unit of practice, they get to move on to the next one. Even if we haven't finished unit one and they are done with that math adventure, they can go on to unit two. Apparently it doesn't happen very often, but if it does, that's what's gonna happen. So each math adventure, each unit, is a different color packet. So red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. So that way I can see which unit they are currently on. And once they finish a math adventure packet, they simply turn it in, I can thumb through it, and I can use that information to see if there are other skills or things that are lacking that I can supplement and support. So another really good way to informally assess. All right, so then that brings us to our math game. Similar to our Fact Fluency Center, this is going to be something that my team teacher leads because she has all the math games. However, if you just look at like second grade math centers on Teachers Pay Teachers, there is already so much created in terms of games and other like practicing type things. But during this center, we are going to have some type of game prepared for the week that matches whatever we are teaching. Now, the beautiful thing about this structure is you only have to plan and prep one game per week because each group only hits each center one time. So that was one of the major selling factors for me. So that is our math game center. Also this year, um, I have an aide, which is lovely. So my aide can help run this center. If you don't have an aide, this would be a good thing for a parent to come volunteer and help in. And if you don't have that, you're just gonna really have to train your kids to follow directions, which is totally doable. Okay, so then that brings us to the final center, which is happy numbers. So this makes it so the kids actually get on happy numbers five days a week which is awesome because like I said, it's individualized, differentiated instruction, it's extra practice, it's engaging for the kids. So it's just another really good thing to plug into centers to give them that extra practice. Okay, I think I have covered my math block. The only other thing that we do for math that I think is important to mention um, is an addition onto our fact fluency center. So once a week, the kids will take a fact fluency quiz. I think we're gonna do it on Wednesdays this year. Um, I don't actually have the quizzes. Again, this is something from my team teacher. I will do my best to find something similar and link it down below for you. Um, but essentially, the kids master one fact family a week, or they try to. So let's say they're on their ones. So we give them a addition fact fluency quiz. If they pass it, they get to sign their name on our little fact fluency challenge board, and then they move on to their twos. If they don't, they get another week to practice. So that fact fluency center kind of front loads that quiz portion. They get to use that time to practice for those quizzes. And I will link the um, challenge board that we have in our classroom. If you watched my classroom setup, you've seen it. Um, but I will link that down below. I'm hoping that it's a really fun kind of motivator for them to actually make sure they practice. <laughs> so that's the only other little piece of our math block that I thought was important to note. All right, I think I have covered it all. Now, I know it's a little bit confusing, so if you have any questions or you need any sort of a clarification, let me know down below. I will do my best to get to all of you. Please also keep in mind, there are a hundred ways to run math centers. This is just one way. Um, if you do something in your classroom that you absolutely love, please let us know down below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, make sure you click the subscribe button. I am about to film my classroom tour this weekend, so that will be up soon. I don't want you to miss that. So if you're not already, make sure you're subscribed. But other than that, I think we have it all covered. I love you guys so much, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.